Hey guys, Dan here with Duty Speed Shop. I want to talk about this car for one quick second. So this 57 Chevy, two-door sedan, Bel Air. Uh, this was a huge part of the channel and, and now a huge part of my life. Uh, me and Danielle, we built this car on the channel and it's what got a pile of people to come to the channel and kind of grow the community and all that. We really appreciate it. So uh, people ask about this car uh, nonstop, how it was built, how to do things, blah, 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 blah. blah. I just love these Tri Fives. So this car did start off as a four-door sedan, small block Chevy. It was blown apart in a million pieces. I put it together for Danielle. She started driving it as a, as a four-door with a small block Chevy in it. And now it's a two-door post with an LS motor in it. And uh, it's come a long way in, in a short amount of time. And, uh, and most of you guys were along there for the ride as well. So I thought I'd edit down some of the videos, get the real nitty gritty in it, how it can be done. It's super easy. Uh, I think the video is about an hour long. So if you have a four door sedan and a set of two door doors, you can have one of these very easy. And uh, yeah, here I just kind of show it. So again, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, really tell your friends, do all the things, I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we can go down a little trip down memory lane because that'll be fun. And yeah, oh, I was sick last year, one year ago when I did this. So it was before COVID. So uh, don't comment that I have it. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoy it again. and. Uh, Tell all your friends, anybody that's thinking about doing a, a Tri-5 Chevy two-door conversion, this is a super easy way to do it and uh, very cost-effective. All right, guys, enjoy. So, two-door conversion time. So, I don't know how long this is going to take. <coughs> I'm sure I'll do it over a few uh, <coughs> few episodes there. But uh, this one I'm going to do a little different. I did the 55. I had that parts car. I don't have that on this situation, so I'm going to be using... The back door is a skin, and I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with the trim, but I'll figure that out once it's a two-door, because uh, <clears throat> four doors aren't for me, as it turns out. Hey guys, present down here. As it turns out, I do like four doors, and you know what? If you do too, this can be yours. We're giving it away at 57,000 subscribers, so uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, share it around, do all those things. This is a pretty nice car. I've redone all the floors, all the brakes in it. It's got a fuel injected 350 in it, custom interior, brand new Krager wheels. It's a custom hot rod. All right, back to the video. So step one, I'm gonna uh, start pulling the interior out. So I gotta pull the seats out and then uh, put the carpet right out or roll over, put a welding blanket down. Doors off, which has come off no big deal. Uh, I hope anyways, I know the other side, I don't even know how many the doors are on when I got this thing. Do that. <clears throat> and then I'll bring you back and I'll kind of show you uh, the way this post is. I know a lot of guys uh, drill it out and stuff like that. I did it on the 55 and that just tore it right up. So I think I'm just going to uh, cut it out. And then it is different here. This section is different on a four-door and a two-door. So I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with that just yet. But I'm sure I'll figure something out. We'll make it work. But yeah, so I'll get uh, to disassembly. Well, just like that's a two-door. Take doors off. So, uh, pretty simple. Now the problem's gonna be, uh, like I said, right here, this is where I'm gonna wanna join the, uh, the back skin on, so I'll have to do a little trimming on that and make that fit. For this piece here, and you see this little lip, it kinda rolls over, so it's all spot welded in. That's where I ended up drilling a bunch of holes out on the, the 55. But I think what I'm gonna do on this one is just zip cut the whole piece right out, and then I'll just weld the piece in, cause it's just uh, super easy. At the bottom, same kind of idea. It's got a little lip here that just goes around. So I'll just kind of cut that out <clears throat> and across. And I take this piece out. And what this piece does is it just kind of has a little contour of the door. So I'll try and zip it out uh, best I can to keep it because I'll probably just end up using a little piece here because I think that the two door and the four door, this little piece is all the same. So I'll take that piece out zip that out <coughs> and then the post should be uh easy to come out i don't actually think i'm going to take the whole interior apart i might pull the back seat out and stuff and i'll just kind of roll the carpet over and then the eh, maybe i should take the bench out it's just super easy to do but once i get the post out everything will come out really really easy so i think that's what i'm going to uh that's what I'm work on next so after about 10 minutes of grinding there you go so like I said, I just kind of cut it, the piece right out. <clears throat> I'll just show you. I find it easier 
to cut that. Well, just down here, even I could show you. So now all we have to do is just, uh, I'll clean this up a little bit, but a flat piece, like a little L on it, back down, weld it in, and there you go. And that's on the inside of the car. And uh, I mean, the post will end up kind of somewhere about here, so you're only going to see a little bit of it. So it'll be uh, no big deal. <coughs> so I don't think there's a, too much of a point going too crazy. And then up top, same thing. I'll just kind of bend a little piece up, weld it in, and then on the inside, it just kind of goes to nothing. There's uh, some little trim pieces that go around. So that's that. <clears throat> it was pretty simple. Just gotta make sure you get the wiring out of the way. This one, the actual uh, dome light worked. So I wanna make sure it kept working. So I just gotta clean off the little slag here, what's up, whatever's left. And then like I said, because I didn't drill any spot welds out on the bottom side, I'll have to uh, kind of clean this piece off and uh, I'll even be able to just reuse it. But that worked out a lot better because like I said, when I was drilling it out, I just mangled this piece. So I found it easier. <clears throat> I'm not going for an original look. Right down there. So yeah, there you go. Now you've done this, <clears throat> panic sets in. Been there. Uh, so the next step I'm gonna do, I'll hang the door, just with the same hardware. Hang the door, close it. Make sure you're happy with your gap on the fender around here. And at the front, it's always really tight here. So do the best you can, as much fitting as you can right now. And then uh, I'll show you once you kind of close the door. What I did before is I actually latched the post on to the door. Now this is a different post, so I might have to do some chopping to it. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I also, I guess I got to get in there and take this piece of glass out and some of the moldings out. But uh, that's a fair bit of progress in, uh, in an hour. You can sure mangle something up pretty quick. There it is. Rough, real rough. But so you can see my, my fender gap is pretty good. This gap around here is pretty good, but I'm real tight here. And this isn't too bad. It kind of curves up just a little bit. So if I can drop the door just a little, I should be able to open that up a little. But it's a pain doing it with a, a stool and a floor jack. It's kind of a two-man job, but I just got it clamped together. So there you go. Just that simple. And as you can see, where I cut out the post is actually hidden by the door. So now the next thing is uh, fit that post in. <clears throat> I think I'm done for the night though. I'm feeling kind of crappy and zonked. I got to do a little research in here. I don't know what I'm going to do with this piece right here. I might just kind of cut it out and then uh, weld something back in after. But that's the only thing with metal. You can just uh, grind and weld till you're happy. So that's that. I took this back window out, a little piece of this chrome because uh, you're going to have to cut this piece out at a bit of an angle. So that's all out. And then something we want to do for the inner structure, a lot of guys you know I just skin it and kind of weld it in. Uh, I think I want to keep as much of the inside structure of the door as I can, just so it has uh, some strength to it. But we'll see. So that's what I'll be uh, be back at tomorrow. But that's it for me tonight. Like I said, uh, yeah, probably make us a few part series. You know, kind of put up a video every couple of days as I'm making progress. So make sure you like, tell your friends, subscribe, all those good things, and I'll be back at tomorrow. Come on guys, it's another uh, cold day out in the garage. So I did a little bit of a, what's this, a little work area. <clears throat> I pulled the uh, seats out. So I just kind of roll the carpet over. I'll probably do that or throw a welding blanket down. So the task today, I'm going to fill in these uh, two voids that I've cut out. <clears throat> so I plan with that. This is the old roof off the that scrap two-door 55 I had years ago. So it's going to keep giving. And then... The post, I gotta figure out how this works. <clears throat> so I'm gonna cut this piece off. This is what would fit in between the two doors. So I'm gonna try and take it off. I might reuse it to join everything together. And I was doing a lot of research. A lot of people are convinced that you have to uh, use the four door latch and graft it onto the two door door. So I've heard that both ways it does work and doesn't work. I'm gonna try not to, I don't really wanna cut up a door. I'm already chopping up the post. So I might have to make some spacers on that or we'll see what happens. They are the identical latches, so uh, there's no issues there. I think I actually used four door latches on my two door when I did it. So I'll have to do a little measuring there and, <clears throat> and just see what I can fix. But kind of a boring day, so I'll get that kind of ground down, a little piece welded in and uh, test fit the door a little more because they say it's a little, a little unhappy yet. I gotta bring it back. 
Then once I get the door where I want it, then I can make that fit, weld that in, and the door should latch. I gotta go through this latch, it's all seized up, so it needs to be kind of WD-40. Get that going, and then I can start worrying about what I wanna do with this back section. See my pieces? I just cut it out and kind of bent in the vise, and then that's the top one. So now let's kind of go back, I'll clean this piece up, and just kind of grind around, get all this junk off. A few little tack welds, and then I'll see, I'm not too worried about it because I think the post is going to cover the back half of it. So I might just have to kind of make this front part look nice and same up top because that's, uh, that's where it is. So I'm not going to be too concerned about it. I'll just kind of weld it in and then once I get the post in, I'll finish weld the parts I think they're going to be seeing because it's not structural. And then, uh, yeah, I should be able to start working on the post. Okay, so I kind of jumped ahead there. I got going. So I got those patches in. I don't even know if I brought them guys back, but they're in. Uh, I ended up trimming up the uh, post, so I cut this little piece off, which is right here. And then I just kind of placed it where I want it. <clears throat> Gave it a couple of really ugly tack welds right through the paint even. But uh, <clears throat> it latches. Now it's still got obviously a lot of plagues. There's no weather strip. You can see there's still a gap. But overall, uh, it's not too bad at the top. It could go up a little bit. Uh, but I mean, then you're going to gain the bottom. The bottom's a nice fit. So I'm happy with that. I got to fold this door out. <coughs> it's got a big whammo. So yeah, I mean, that's that's that. Uh, like I said, once this piece, uh, I got to, you know, make a piece that will go out to the, uh, the skin of the door. <coughs> I don't know. Seems to work fine without changing that, uh, the hinge like people are recommending. So I'm happy with that. Still a little bit tight the front, so I can uh, take a little bit out maybe more. But I mean, I don't know, it's progress. So I think that's it for a night. <clears throat> Being sick really kicking me in the ass here. So I'm gonna, uh, tomorrow, be probably cutting that piece out and then uh, doing some measuring as to what I wanna do for that uh, quarter panel skin and how I wanna attach it. But really, you know, seems to be going pretty good. Never done it this way before, but uh, I think it'll have the overall desired effect. So I got bored after supper and I came back out to the garage. So I uh, cut that little piece out. I got the uh, inner structure of the door. I cut the top of it off because I've obviously got the section a piece of it out so I just chopped it. And I kept as much here because I think that's where I'll, uh, I'll do some miscellaneous stuff. And now I'm going to cut just four inches off. I measure it's about six, but I like to just kind of eyeball it. So I'm going to cut off a little bit and then I should just have a skin. I can kind of overlay on the car a little bit and get a good idea of where I'm going to be at. So uh, I'm down to one last zip disc, unfortunately. So hopefully I'll be able to slice this up and then uh, test fit it and then get some more stuff tomorrow. All right. So I obviously it's, I have way too much material. It's, it's hanging into the door, but uh, I want to test fit it all, and then I don't know if I'll be able to trace it or if I'll have to measure it. So I'll have to cut it so it kind of contours the door a little bit, so it's close. <clears throat> Obviously, I left a lot of material there, but you can kind of see how it's going to fit. So I, my plan is just kind of grind a little bit. I got to take this uh, trim off, then just kind of weld it on. So that's that. A uh, little bit of trimming to do there. So now this. I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to slice it here because obviously whatever I took out of the door, I got to take out of this top piece. There's a curve at the top. So I think when I put this in, that curve to maintain, I'll have to leave all that, but it kind of flattens out here. So I'll take, I think it's about six inches. I'll probably take six inches out about there. Weld that back on as that comes back. Then this section I can put into there or do whatever I got to do. So I probably got to trim a little bit more out because I like how this... This is all one piece there. But I mean, once that's in, I'm not sure what I'm going to do <coughs> if I'm going to put trim back up there. Because if I do, then I mean, it'll hide a lot of that bodywork and stuff. So if the trim down here, if I can find something there, it'll uh, draw your eye away from everything I'm doing. So, I mean, that's just kind of it. It's just uh, tacked together and some uh, clamps. <coughs> but overall, I mean, we're getting there for, uh, for two days of chopping. It's a two door in my mind. So I'll uh, realign the door, make sure I'm happy with that, weld in the post permanently, uh, and then I gotta get zip cut discs. So I'm out now, 
and trim everything up and kind of test it all together but uh the des desired uh, effect is there for sure but that is it for me tonight now i'm going to bed i've had enough of this but uh, i'll be back at tomorrow hopefully we'll get this thing kind of tacked together and we'll call it for this video part one done what's going on guys so it's day three of chopping up this uh 57 chevy into a two-door made a lot of progress like a bomb has gone off in here but <clears throat> i'm gonna keep going so my plan today i want to get everything tack welded all together see what's gonna look like make sure i'm happy with it so i'm gonna just try and sand just a little bit of the paint off the edges here so i can weld that in i'm gonna have to get in and uh at least peel it back a little bit for now uh the trim and up here as well so i gotta fit this top piece in and then uh, here, so obviously I gotta trim this to fit, so I wanna make sure this is gonna be all the way back where I want it. I'm gonna have to measure in a few spots uh, across, obviously from like the opening to the door itself, <clears throat> and then trace my line where I want it to be, cut that out, and hopefully that'll be perfect, just give me a nice little door gap. I might even go just a little bit on the long side and work my way into it. That's the only really kind of critical part here <clears throat> that has to be pretty much perfect everything else I'm just kind of winging it picked up a uh, 50 pack of zip discs that is the uh, tool of choice so I'm gonna get like I said take some of this trim off do a little bit of cleaning up and then uh, I'll get this kind of traced out and show you guys how it uh, how I think it's gonna go for me here's the progress I've made so I measured take my little piece off and that's just the excess so that's basically the panel uh, <clears throat> I went around the edge here uh, so I, I peeled off some of this. The problem is it's actually all glued on. So I'm just going to kind of peel it back gingerly. Same with the top. I got it kind of half out. Uh, so I'm happy with that. This panel now fits pretty decent. It's going to be hard to do one-handed, but we'll just see. So if I get it kind of lined up with my knee. It's tight on the door, which is good. And up here, it's a little uh, a gap, but I have to make that piece is going to go up and this piece here which it would have stuck between the doors so i'm going to probably have to cut this out i've seen a lot of guys doing they do a four door to two door they, they make the door look kind of janky i want it to look just like my car where it's just a line straight down and then it does its thing here so i'm going to get this just kind of a few tack welds in so i'm happy with where it is then i can come back because i have the door because there's no weather strip in it i have the door clamped for where i think it's about going to be I can open the door, cut everything else out, and start working on this top piece. And this will just be a set tacked in. So if I want to change anything, cut three or four tack welds to have it all, all apart. So when I get back, this will be tack welded in. I'm sure this will be chopped into a bunch of pieces. So we got a few welds holding on. It's real flimsy at the front, obviously, here, because i got to build the structure and then all in there. But, I mean, you kind of get the gist of it. The door will open and close. And do its thing so i'll have to do a little shaping in there but again i gotta weld in some structure so i don't know if it'll be on the outside or inside but i'll figure that out so it's turned out pretty good so now i'm gonna start trying to fit this piece in uh so i'm probably gonna have to skin part of it away and uh you know i might just chop in two pieces so it's a little more manageable because i gotta take a few inches out and i think this is gonna be the straightest area right there take the uh take the material out because they're right back here it's actually got quite a bend to it yet so that's my plan right here when it's kind of flat hopefully it works out otherwise uh i have other doors i'll chop them up progress update so i got this piece tacked in i got this piece so i had to cut it and i had to skin it so it would fit <coughs> and it fits uh pretty decent i'm gonna have to uh just kind of twist it down a little because you can see it's even not even really happy with the door <clears throat> but if I drop it a little bit, if I can't do that because it's sitting on top of uh, here, so I'll have to trim this piece out. The only thing I boned a little bit was just this little pie piece right here. I should have had this panel just follow the door a little better. But uh, what are you going to do? I'll have to weld a little piece in. But otherwise, that's kind of how it's turning out. So I'll uh, do a little more kind of slicing and dicing on this piece, a few more tack welds. And then once I do that, then I can get into the door and kind of make this a little nicer and decide what I want to do for a uh, structure on the inside because it's just floppy there. But yeah, it's looking good. So I got another piece on. I'm happy with this gap. 
Now they'll probably run into this piece I have left. I chopped it off, but you can see when it was together, it's not going to be long enough. And uh, I mean, I got to fix this little pie piece anyways. So I pulled a uh, other door out of stock, and I'm hoping if I trim a little piece out and go a little long, I can clean it up and just kind of get in there. It'll look a little goofy. I mean, I'll have to paint it or do something, but. Uh, if I get the trim right, the trim does go right across to there. So just be this little bit there. I'd have to blend in or do something or, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave it how it is or try and paint it. But, uh, so that's what I'm gonna try and do. I'm gonna try and cut another piece of another door and then uh, see what I can trim around there. Make it happen. Here's where I ended up. It's all pretty much back together. Eh, it could've worked out a little nicer there, but uh, when the door is closed, I still got to do a little bit of screwing around with the gap, but this is good here. I'm happy with. Now on the inside, obviously, it's just uh, flopping away. So this is the piece I cut out originally. And how did this go? It's gone just like that. Oh, I had it. So I'm going to end up cutting that down because this would have fit on there and been flush on the outside between the two doors and the four door. So I'll just kind of cut it down, weld it back in, I'll clean up in here, and that'll give me my nice little, uh, you know, this little look in there. Should fit perfectly. So that's it. I think that's what I'm gonna call it. I'm just gonna put, uh, I might do that later on tonight, but I mean, ultimately, that's just a few tack welds to hold it all together. I'm not gonna finish this whole side. I wanna get going on the other side too, get everything all tacked together, squared away, so I'm happy with it. And then uh, I can come back and start messing around doing all the little stuff. But ultimately, the shape is there. Not much is going to change. And if I do, I can just cut a couple of welds and take it all apart. So that's it for me. That was probably, I don't know, three nights of doing this. It wasn't too bad. Hopefully it makes a good video for you guys. Part one of this thing. And like I said, when I come back, we'll start fitting with trim and all those kind of things. Make it look a little nicer. But uh, that's, it. that's it. That's all. This is the trim off the, the door, which I chopped down. So that's basically, you can tell how much you take out. So my thoughts are, I mean, the, this one's easy. Whoa. Slip it, you know, pull it back a little bit. This one, same thing. I should be able to just kind of buzz her down there. We got to fill in this area and there's one underneath as well. So I don't know if I'll have enough room. I could take it from there and put it back there. And same up front, it's got this little you know, slip where the door would have been. So if I kind of cut it, maybe I can fill in down there. And I'm going to leave it probably just so it's a couple of pieces. So, I mean, it'll, it'll clearly look like it's not right. But, uh, you know, cruising down the road, I think it'll be fine. And then for the front here, I might actually break down and buy the piece. We'll see, because I don't know. Two pieces together might look a little funny on that. But uh, that's my plan. So same thing uh, for the door here. I have uh, I have a whole second set of trim, so my hope is I can put them together. I might be able to weld them and polish them. We'll see, but uh, ultimately, that's where I'm going. Now, the whole reason I started this two-door thing, I mean, uh, the car was pretty solid. I just hated the passenger side. <clears throat> the uh, the door was rotted. You know, the bottom of the fender looks like crap. So I just this is the side I hated, and I don't know why. My little tiny brain thought. This beat up door would somehow look better on it, but uh, that's where I'm going. So uh, more of the same. This video I probably won't be going as in depth. So if you want to know what I did, you know, click on the video from the last one. I'll put a link in. I don't know the video or the description or something like that. But I'll be uh, taking this side apart. So this one's less of a how-to and more just uh, you guys are following along with me. But yeah, I'll get started. All right, a little more progress, so I got the door on. What I did this time, instead of trying to use a floor jack, I just strapped it to the other post and kind of held it in. It's got a, a bit of an angle downwards, but it's uh, mostly there, so the center post is out. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is pull this back glass out, and then all you do is just zip it off here and here with the Sawzall. <clears throat> and then all the uh, four-door stuff is basically removed. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do about this door. It's way worse than I remember. Something must have bashed into it because it's got a bunch of folds in it too, but oh well, I'll figure something out. Maybe it'll just look like this. Well, I skipped ahead a few steps. So I cut out the little uh, quarter window 
I ended up dressing up the post. It's just vice gripped in. I welded my patch at the bottom and the top. Uh, so the post's a little crooked. I still got to straighten it out just a little bit, but uh, overall, the door closes. Got a little bit of a gap, so I do have to just knock it up a little bit, or maybe I can do it on the uh, striker even. But uh, I mean, that's that. Open and closes, minty. So I'm going to uh, straighten that out a little bit. I'll put a few tack welds on the post, get that where I want it, and then I think that's where I'm going to leave it for tonight. Because if I tackle this door, it's going to be an all night thing. And uh, Saturday night, I got to uh, lay tomorrow out in the garage. So I should be able to knock out the other side of this tomorrow and make it, uh, you know, kind of two door skin tacked together. If I'm happy with it, then I'll start uh, finish welding it all together. So I'll come back one more time when this is all welded up. So there we go. Bunch of ugly tack welds, but uh, it's a two door. So like I said, there's a bit of a gap here, but there's also a gap. The gap kind of starts off thick and gets uh, skinny, so the door can whoop, do that. That'll be perfect. It's a little tight right here, so I might have to just kind of get the grinder in there, clearance that a little. Yeah, so overall it's pretty good. I learned a bunch from the other side, you know, getting this piece out early. And, uh, you know, I know how to section the door now. <coughs> like I said, I'm probably going to need to cut another door up to add a little length there. But uh, I'm going to leave that for tomorrow. I've had enough for tonight. Uh, just going to clean up a little bit, make sure this doesn't burst into flames. And then I'll come out tomorrow, peel the trim back a little bit, a little bit of grinding around the edges, and then uh, skin the door. Chop the top off, put the skin on first, then go around. Same as the other side, worked out pretty good. You can see on that side, there's no framework on the inside. But uh, yeah, overall, I mean, it turned out pretty good. It's going pretty quick. I started this, uh, well, it's been three days. I put the video out today or yesterday and then today. So it's four days, maybe five days. So I should be able to have it. I mean, ugly looking like a two door, uh, in a week. So, I mean, anybody can do it. It's just, uh, grinding and welding. Nothing too crazy. It's just got to get your mind around chopping the doors out of a car, right? Everybody I tell it to thinks I'm crazy, which I love it. And I'm sure some of you guys think it's no big deal. All right, guys. So it's next day, Sunday morning. Should be able to get a lot done today. So step one, skin this door, get everything I want off of it. Take all the trimming crap off. Once I get that, I'm gonna weld this post in properly, grind it up, make sure it's all dealt with. Start taking some of this trim out a little bit, which I already done on the other side. And uh, I think I'm just, I'm not gonna do a whole lot of filming there. Next time you see me, I should have that just kinda fit in there. Cause uh, if you don't know how to do that, watch the other video I just posted, so. Yeah, lots of progress, good day. So it's been about an hour. Uh, skinned the door, got it in place with a few tack welds. So it fits, uh, not bad. I got this gap here, which I uh, planned for this time. So I still gotta make this piece fit, so I cut that. So as it, when it goes on, I'll just blend it in. So this piece again, I'll probably have to cut into uh, a few strips. I ended up cutting it uh, kind of there. And I might cut it right in the center on this one, add a piece, and I gotta cut that off. And then all the guts out from the inside. And then uh, trim this up a little bit. That's just kind of holding place right there. Uh, I might do a little bit of grinding, fit this gap up a little bit, but otherwise, making some progress. So I gotta loosen these off again, get them kind of hanging out. Then I can start putting this top piece on. But yeah, it should. Uh, should be tacked together in another hour or two. So not much progress, but some. Uh, I got this top piece on. I got this trimmed up, so it's I'm happy with it. Uh, again, down here, I think I'm gonna have to slice it and do something there. Uh, I got this cut kind of around the door where I'm gonna want it. It's actually gonna go down a little bit, so that should be good. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is next, probably slice it you know, right about there, something like that. I'll go out in the yard and just chop maybe a section of this out of the uh, of spare door I have and get that in there and get this where I want it, join it together, a couple of buzzes and uh, we're rolling. This piece here, I had to take all of the material off so it'll fit and I, like, I had to cut this piece down here. Uh, so it's a, little, it's a little bit of trimming and the inside, I don't know if you can see, I left the channel 
so that'll be able to put a couple of tack holds in the back side so this will only be held by the front and around i guess once it's in i might be able to just put a few in there not that it's got any load on it but just uh yeah that's what i thought i had to do let me know if you do guys do it different so there we go she's in a couple ugly welds it's all good this one actually ended up i didn't have to lengthen it all it's a little bit of a bump here so i could have but i ended up just kind of welding it in there it was fine seems to fit the door okay obviously it's there's no strength there because i still gotta do that but that'll be on the next video i'll be figuring out how i'm gonna make the uh door jam but i mean i mean realistically this is where all the strength is it just has to hold the panel for coming in and out so it'll be a bunch of times opening and closing the door uh and then i got you know sand down all around there weld the doors in both sides uh you know a little bit of trimming here and there but overall it's pretty good this is the pain in the ass part you actually have the uh you can see on the four door door the post goes down but actually kind of kicks over and then down so that's why on on the uh four door it's got that little piece that runs down so to make it look like a proper two door it's a little bit of screwed around in there but i'm happy with it i think it turned out pretty good i mean uh, the other car i did i had way more parts so this one was a little bit of uh you know, guessing and whatnot this doors drive me nuts so it either needs a skin or uh Maybe I'll find some used doors. It's uh, <clears throat> a long time yet before I got a bunch of screwing around to do, and this one fits. So whatever I do, I can just unbolt it and bolt the new one on. So like I said, next I'll be doing the inside structures, uh, probably like you know the like this the uh, jam and the inside as well, and maybe start playing with some trim because that's kind of fun. And then I got to look around for garnish moldings. I have a bunch of four-door ones, so I can chop them up and same thing, weld them all together, and make it work. I'm not too sure yet, but. Uh, that's it, so six days of work. I got a two-door 57 Chevy. I mean, it runs, drives, does all those things. That still is all the same. But yeah, I'm excited to uh, finish that off and put that LS motor in. I found actually a set of doors. I only have one on the car right now. They were off a uh, 56 Pontiac, uh, Canadian Pontiac. So they're basically the exact same as a Tri-5 Chevy. So the thing is absolutely mint and it's already white so it'll be easy if i set to paint it or whatever i do with it i uh started doing some welding on this uh, back panel so it's on i've trimmed the uh the skin to fit i did a little mess around with the trim so i just kind of rough cut it with the zip cut but uh you know overall kind of gives a look i thought i had more trim i thought i had a second set which i do I don't have a second set of the uh, the door stuff, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. Might have to just do. Uh, I gotta find some more because I was gonna split it and uh, and lengthen it for top and bottom because the back will look pretty good. And across there kind of takes your eye away from it. The Pontiac trim, unfortunately, it's actually a little bit different. So I don't know. If I'm gonna leave it or what I'm gonna do there. I'll figure something out. I'll just take this off if I can. <clears throat> so everything's kind of been uh, welded in somewhat permanently i got to do a little bit more work on it finish welding it i haven't done anything on the other side i've got this piece uh tacked in so this is the piece that originally separated the door in the four door so uh you know it's kind of ugly welded in but i'm gonna finish welding that in nice to the skin and all that i haven't welded the bottom of the door uh hardly at all it's got a nice curve to it everything was happy it matched the door i just got to fill a little piece in there and at the bottom but overall the look is there i'm pretty stoked on it worked out really well so i'll probably finish off this side maybe on the other side i'll start i didn't really know what i was going to do so that's why i didn't do a lot of filming uh with this piece and i still got to make a little curve I don't know where i put it that goes into the bottom of the door <coughs> oh there we go because on uh, the two door, you can see the door is a little curved on the four door, it's just straight down. So I gotta weld something in there. Yeah, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and bodywork this, just leave the scars as it is. I have another fender for it, but it's a different color. I don't know if I wanna put that on here and really make it a ratty looking car or what. So these doors, these that I went with them, they were complete. The other doors, well, that's the door I took off. It was just a skin, it had the uh, door mechanism just for like the door latch. No glass, no window uh, regulator, no nothing. 
and uh, this one is complete. So I got garnish moldings, <clears throat> all the stuff. It's got glass in it, and everything works, which is nice. Uh, I got to go back and pick it up, but I'll probably get the back glass from that car. I'm going to get the garnish moldings for the back, and uh, another. I'm going to do the other door. I bought them both. Bit of a package deal, but that made uh, a world different. These doors are so nice; it drives me nuts. Actually, uh, I kind of want to put them on my car. Give Danielle the the doors up the 55. So they're just they're so rust free and mint, they're dead original. But uh, I don't know. I'm gonna get cleaning up a little bit in here, and uh, I'll probably bring it back. I'm probably just gonna start welding on these uh, these panels. Kind of show you what's gonna turn out. A little bit of welding and grinding. I mean, the big work's done. Uh, lots of trimming and screwing around, but. Uh, that's what's in store tonight. Well, I haven't been doing much filming. Doing a lot of welding, a lot of grinding, and that's uh, that's pretty boring. I know a lot of you guys always say you want to see me kind of do the action, but I'm not gonna lie, I've already burnt through one GoPro doing that, and they're uh, they're a few bucks, so I generally don't do it. But uh, so the door's all welded on, grounded all down across the bottom, and it's a little ugly down there. The uh, the rocker <clears throat> as I was grinding, even it started to kind of disintegrate so i mean it's all welded in the front the back is actually full of plastic here so i didn't do anything there so i don't know what i'm gonna do about that i'm fighting out what i should even do with this if i should try and blend all the paint and stuff or or i mean just kind of leave it as is i'm not trying to hide it was a four door you'll just have this kind of scar around the end and it'll have all the trim and and whatnot inside so i got that all dealt with it's all welded in it's happy uh down here i sectioned in that uh that little piece off the four door so it now uh fits nice around the door i see there but it's happy so all i have left is fill this one little gap in there and i gotta do something up there a little bit finish holding the post on the front half and that's that and then uh I found the door even. I just, I love how it's in such good shape. It's original paint. It's all faded out. It's got like moss and stuff on it and everything. Like, that looks cool, I think. I don't know if I should paint it blue or what. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm kind of thinking if I just uh, put the trim back on, it'll hide a lot of this. It'll hide all that. All you'll see is just this piece and then around the bottom, which you'll hardly see anyways because it's down low in the car. And actually down low in the car, they sell... Uh, a piece of trim which this car would have had so that'll actually hide the the bottom scar or at least take your eye away from it so you just see a little bit and then uh, that and then the front I pulled this fender I had out of the snowbank it came with the car I guess it's in better shape so I don't know if I should put that on there it'd be a bunch of miscellaneous colors but it's been a few hours I'm calling for a night we'll be back at it tomorrow I'm gonna pick up the other door garnish moldings maybe some windows I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow and I'll probably start on the other side and I'll show you exactly uh, maybe how I did this inner piece. Because I learned a lot doing this side. <coughs> and I want to make sure, because when you put it in, you kind of end up curving this panel because it's so flimsy. So I want to make sure I'm going to fit it to the other door so it'll be as, uh, as close as possible. So that's it for now. I'll be back at it tomorrow. What's going on guys? Next day, just after work, in the garage. Picked up the other door today and uh garnish moldings nicely patinaed to the rest of the car beat up so i'm gonna uh today i'm gonna work on basically what i kind of showed you yesterday but i'll just show you step by step what i did now that i know what i'm doing because there's no structure there uh my old man's actually coming over so i'm gonna pull this door off he's gonna help me put that one on he doesn't know it yet but that's what's happening they're way heavier when they have uh, glass in them, as it turns out. So this bare shell. Get that lined up so I'm happy with it, and then I can start working on the back. Pretty simple, right? I can't stress enough how much I love these doors. I'm jealous of Danielle, and uh, she worked out pretty good. She's going to have nicer doors than I have on my car, and I paid for them. Original paint, no rust. It's like, uh, it's like a California door, and there's snow on it. And I love this. I need a name of the guys in the medium dark pickup who stole parts from this and other vehicles. 10.45 a.m. Thursday, July 23rd. I think that's going to stay on there. So, I'm, uh, I'll pull this door off, wait for my old man, 
we'll slam this one back on. Should be good. All right, old man just left. Uh, been a couple hours. Start bullshitting like usual. Uh, doors on. Fits pretty mint. Oh, again, snug at the front. They're always snug at the front. Actually, looks like the front of the door might have to go up just a little bit because the gap gets smaller. But I'm happy with it. All through there is good. Obviously, it's tight there because I haven't done anything with it. I don't have the jam on or the uh, the uh, striker, sorry. So I got to do a little trimming right there down the other door as well. And I'll be able to put the uh, lash back on, get it fitting where I want. And then uh, once the door is on, you can see... <coughs> close there a little bit more but it's hitting on the post then i can decide you see how the door is out here but in there but you can flex it no problem so i'll get that in get it tacked up get the door all fit right but i'll uh oh, get that trimmed up guys uh i'll bring you back once the door kind of closes properly these doors fit just a little different than the other ones for some reason but uh anyways you can see i got a lot of gap here this one down there but again the door is so flimsy i'll just push it out here and it'll be fine got my marker i'm just going to trace the door down i'll zip cut out about what i want but i have the door latching and everything just perfect i did have to trim out part of this uh, pillar so i'll have to just make a l piece inward and i had to uh space these hinges out. i just put a couple of washers behind it, it looks a little tacky so i think i might Make a plate in the same shape or something like that to space it out but anyways so i guess i'm going to tr uh, trim this off and in here i just rough cut so i'm going to get in here and grind all this uh you know kinda, this is that little uh kind of piece i'll trim that out touch this piece right here that i cut out that's what i'm going to use in here so i'll get that trimmed out down to bare metal clean that up a little bit and start uh start fitting so, got my door gap, which I'm happy enough with. I can always clean that up with a grinder after. The door opens and closes, which is nice. <clears throat> I got this little filler piece in. Grab the light here. So you can kind of see. I did, right at the top, I had to just kind of pry it out a little bit. Just put a screwdriver in there as so I put a few tack welds in. Just so this curve right here was going to match the door. But it's happy all the way down the bottom is happy this bottom hole that'll be covered up by the little uh little curve for the for the bottom of the door like i did on the other side so same thing i'll just have to fill in right there but i'm not too worried about it uh the door i got it all adjusted so i'm i'm pretty happy with it could use a little bit more adjustment but <clears throat> it's good enough for me right here is just a little bit of a gap which i can probably work with the hinge a little bit and again, I think the door needs to be a little bit more adjusted, but it's close enough, close enough for me. So I'm just gonna burn this in and call it for the night, cause I'm tired. Well, I've got the jam all welded in there. So I'm just gonna give it a few minutes here, probably clean up in the garage. I'm done for the night, but uh, that's hot. Don't wanna start a fire or anything like that. Uh, while I'm doing that, I guess I'll just wait around. So a couple things, people have been asking a bunch of questions, so I figure I'd address a few of them. Uh, people keep saying quarter panels, put a quarter panel on 100% agree. The post and quarter panel would have made a much nicer conversion. I'm in Canada, a quarter panel is $1,200. The post section, I think it was like three or 400 aside. So we're talking, uh, you know, three, $4,000 before you even know what happened. And ultimately the back half of this car was so nice. Anyways, I just ended up chopping it up. They do sell the pieces. They sell just the bottom piece and just the top piece. So now you're I mean, I don't know. If you're any further ahead, you're, you're putting in two little skins anyways. The post would have been the nicest one for sure. I'm not going to lie. But what are you going to do? That's that. So that was the main question I was going to get. The back windows, I'm not going to have them roll up and down. I don't know if I'm going to use glass. Get glass cut, just plexiglass. I'm not even too sure. But I'll have the trim on there. I'll have the garnish moldings on. You'll never notice. If I'm going to screw around that, I'd rather put air conditioning in the car then uh, mess around having the regulators go up and down i did that on the 55 it was a pile of work and i used it twice this year so uh these things with the the wing windows the little vent windows they get lots of air through there i didn't mind it at all and hey it's an old hot rod the base models of these things like the 150s the back windows didn't even go down anyways so that's what i'm doing there 
calling for tonight. We'll be back at it tomorrow and uh, hopefully I'll finish up welding in that door at the top and I'll test fit the trim on this side. And then the outside is basically done. Then I'm fighting out what I want to do, but uh, probably do a little body work. I don't know if I'm going to do that right away or if I want to work on the inside. And uh, motor swap time. So I'll be back at it tomorrow. All right, guys, next day I'm in the garage. Like usual, Danny's working late tonight, so I got light to myself. Plan is finish welding the door in. Is this just tack, uh, tack welded on? This is the old piece from the uh, four door, so I gotta trim this. So it'll wrap around the bottom of the door there. I actually think I gotta cut this piece out because I don't think I finish welded in the post. And it's behind there. So I'll wanna do that. And I don't know, maybe I'll test fit some trim or do something like that. I'm not really too sure. That way I'll be done on the outside. And I just gotta start working on the structure on the inside, but that'll be another video. So yeah. I'm going to start burning this together. So here we have it. Welded, ground down. It's all happy. Did the edge the whole way down. Got the light here. I put my little corner piece on. All across the bottom is welded in. All up the top. I pulled this uh, pillar off. I got in behind it. <clears throat> got it all welded. So I mean, uh, most of the... Hard work is done. Door gap looks pretty decent. It's all nice and solid. Weld all in there. So I just got to build the inner structures because I don't have anything. I got to fill in the little holes there. I think tomorrow I'm going to uh, take a piece of scrap that I chopped off the door down. See if I can get some paint mixed up for some uh, for some touch up. Start fitting the trim, stuff like that. But I mean, you know, a little bit of screwing around I got to do, and the body works to be funny. <clears throat> because I don't want to, uh, you know, mess up the paint. There's a lot more room on this side, but, uh, you know, just kind of fill in a little bit, do what I can. The door jams, they're kind of ugly, so I'd like to fill those in and paint them. And then, I don't know, I guess it's a little bit of, a little bit of white up here, but again, a lot of this is going to be hidden by trim. But I think that's it for me on this video. Everything else I'll be doing, uh, like I said, will be in the next video. i got a set of bucket seats for it. I'll probably put those in. Stuff like that, I want to get this thing out, maybe blow it all off because it's all full of junk. Out in the wild. So it's going pretty good. I actually stopped by the body shop today, it's Saturday, and uh, picked up some filler and some sandpaper and some stuff I need. And uh, I dropped off a piece of the door that I had uh, sliced so they can uh, paint match it. Because again, it's a bit of a pain to try and match the uh, new paint to the old existing. I just toss this uh, seat in there. I actually got this at the swap meet uh, this year. I was gonna put it in either my car or the Chevelle or something, but uh, another thing of mine, Danielle's gonna get a nice set of low back seats, so paint them up a little bit, make them look a little nicer. But yeah. So just kind of a you know, little intro there to this video. Uh, I'll put it back in the garage once you get it cleaned up a little bit, and I'm gonna start uh, welding up the little holes, fixing up in here, and then uh, as little filler and body work as I can do on that little strip, the whole way down around, back up, <clears throat> and then uh, I got some work to do on the jam. But, I mean, that's, you don't see it when the door's closed, so who cares, right? But I'll be getting going on that, it'll be a bit of a, a body work and, and hopefully paint. So I got rattle cans and then I also got a quart, so I'm thinking I'm going to paint the door, uh, you know, at least this part of it down. <clears throat> the proper blue hopefully can match it. So I'm just going to kind of scuff it. I don't even want to do a whole lot. This thing is obviously red oxide below it. So, I don't know, I might kind of try and beat it up and sand through a little bit and have it match the rest of the car because you can see it's going to be the same underneath. I don't want to have a mint door with uh, the rest of the car looking kind of beat up. So, you know, maybe try to do some of this sand through, wear through. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But anyways, next time you see it, it'll be in the garage and I'll be uh, well, probably welding. Okay, car's back in the garage. So my plan, cut a little piece out here from uh, the section door I had, <clears throat> get that welded in, plug those two holes, put something across here, weld that in, make it look nice, and then uh, probably do a bunch of grinding in the jam, fill that little hole in, gotta probably fill that in I think. 
hoping I can get all that done and then put a coat of filler on just kind of around the edges like right where I uh, sectioned it we'll see we got to go out for you know, Daniel's friend's birthday or something like that tonight so uh, hopefully I can get that down I got a couple hours I might just be able to metal work it and maybe get the back part kind of body filled and then uh, this might be a bit of a task but uh, I don't know, I'll get started and kind of show you guys how it uh, how it turns out pretty simple cut and weld all right here I just show you guys what I did so this is what it looked like there's obviously the hole for where the uh, where rod goes through and then two bolt holes that hold on the uh, handle so I took a piece of cardboard and I put it on the back side I traced it out so you can kind of see I then went to my door which already had the curve on it I rough cut it out with the uh, zip disc and then I uh, used the grinder to kind of shape it then I mean just kind of put the piece of metal in I welded it in and I plug welded up that one hole so it's got kind of the same curvature which is nice and then for the uh, little hole uh, this little tool is just just like uh, copper or something like that so you put it on the back side I don't know if it'll show up on camera or not, but uh, you just kind of work it in there. And then as you weld it, it won't stick to this. And it kind of dissipates the heat and just kind of plug welds it in, grind it off, and you're good. So you'll just need a little schmuck of filler, and it'll be uh, just fine. So yeah, I'll uh, get this one filled up. I mean, the top's just a little plate I got I to gotta use, which I think I have some steel somewhere off the car. And uh, yeah, lots of progress. Here's the progress. So I got those filled in nice. I don't know if I showed you this or not, but I did that. So that's, I mean, good enough. A little bit of filler. Not that I'm really concerned about that. And then inside, I made this little piece here. Uh, pretty simple, but basically I just made a little L piece, kind of welded it in, smoothed it out. It's not the prettiest thing I've ever made, but uh, give it a little schmuck of filler. And then once I sand it, it'll look just fine. And then, like I said, this door jam, I'll probably end up painting the, the jam and then just dust it onto the rest of the door. But uh, that's your job for tomorrow. I've had enough tonight. And uh, I don't really want to get started in body work, but I don't have to. That's what Sundays are for. So that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. All right. So next day, Sunday. So I'm going to try and uh, just try and use as little filler as I can. A few of these spots, I got all my little kind of tiny sanding blocks, so hopefully I can do something there. Like I said, just kind of blend that in best I can, maybe go a little bit further if I have to. And then uh, the door jam's gonna need a fair bit, but uh, whatever, that is what it is. And then I guess just up in here. And then I'm actually not even too worried about what I'm gonna do in here. I'll just kind of clean it up with a grinder a little bit because the uh, chrome will cover that, the chrome will cover all of this actually. I mean, I'll still do something with it. This is the only part you're really going to notice. Here I'll do it just so I can paint it white or do something because you might see through it because the chrome's not going to cover it currently. But yeah, that's that. I went and uh, got some brand new body filler, a bunch of new squeegees. I actually bought this miscellaneous kit. Oh, it's got radius stuff, I don't know. See if I'll use those. Okay. Pretty simple. Schmuck a little bit of that on this side. Do a little bit of sanding. And uh, if I hate that, I'll, I haven't done the other side. Like all the jam and all that. So I'm just go over there and weld that. So, terrible, boring day. All right. It's probably been a couple hours. I hate body work. But uh, it's roughed in. I think I just got like 120. It's uh, very tedious because I'm trying to not, you know, get out of this as much as I can. It's hard to make kind of flat. But it uh, seems to be working out. Down here is no big deal. It actually turned out really well. The door was welded nicer here than it did in this curve, I guess, for whatever reason. And then underneath, hey, I made those uh, rockers. So they're kind of whoop, whoop, whoop as it is. So they're good enough. Uh, get the light. <coughs> Overall, I mean this, I'm happy with this little curve there. In here, this one was really tedious. So I made this little jog out and everything. But, uh, I mean, it's it's good. I mean, I'm sure it won't look too good because uh, it's all just sanded. But once I uh, prime it and shoot it blue, it'll be good enough. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. I actually, uh, 
little thing out on YouTube about doing a live stream. So I'm going to stop doing this and try a live stream. So if you guys are in there, thanks. And leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you hated it, no hard feelings. And then uh, it's about 4 o'clock, so we'll do that. Then it'll be supper time. And uh, I might put another coat of filler on before I have supper. So I get to come out and sand some more. But that's it for now, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys a little later. All right, so next day. Last night before I went in, I just put one more quick skim of filler on. And one little spot because I wasn't happy with how it lined up with the door, but I think that'll be perfect. Uh, so everything's roughed out in uh, 220. So I'm just going to sand it, kind of wipe it all down. And I was going to put just a little bit of, it looks like it's kind of white, red oxide, then white. So I was going to put a little red oxide on there just to prime it. And uh, then up here, same thing, I got a little bit of white paint I might have to put on there. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much ready to go. I stopped by my buddy's Rondex, I'll show you that real quick, but uh, so I'm going to red oxide it, let that set up, and then probably scuff it real quick, and then try and just blow in just the kind of scars I did in this little area here with the blue touch-up, and try and leave as much of the, the original door paint the way it was, so just kind of go from here to here, so I'll mask it all a little bit, but just kind of blow it over a little bit. See how that turns out. I'm hoping it'll dry decent. Worst case, I can kind of sand it, scuff it, do whatever. Because I'm going to have to kind of distress the door a little bit. Because I think otherwise you're going to notice the nice new paint there. I jumped ahead a few steps. I got kind of excited and uh, it was pretty boring. Before you guys give me shit, I'll turn the mask the whole time. Uh, <clears throat> so that's what it looks like. You can see, I don't know if I can even point out right there. So a little bit there, which I might dust in a little more. I'm going to see once the paint hardens up, maybe I can polish it. That's actually the old paint. Just a little bit. It had like a funny thing, and I don't want to keep blowing it in further and further. So I'm sure it's going to show up better on camera than it does in, in real life, but I'm pretty stoked on it. I put the trim on. Everything's just real loose. Like this is all, nothing's fit. But I put that on. I've learned years, years ago, before you mess with the paint too much, put all the trim on so you know what you want to mess with when you're trying to fake patina stuff because this isn't my first time trying to make a car look ratty <clears throat> so i painted it all i let it sit up so it was it was hard but still not not crazy and i went over it with uh, a real fine uh scotch brake just to take the shine down so once that's done all the shines i can go back over and kind of polish it so it's still i mean it's it's hard enough to touch and uh <clears throat> up here i had some white paint it was way too bad so i just kind of tried to i don't know scuff it up a little bit you know, in the jam, same thing. I just kind of dulled it down a little, but ultimately it just needs to be uh, driven, get some nicks on it, all those things. Uh, you know, this is obviously the white you're going to see because of that. The trim, it's not perfect. I still got to come back. I just trimmed it. The ends are open. So I'm going to want to do something there to kind of wrap it around or I don't know, but that's, hey, that's down the road and, uh, and whatnot. <clears throat> I don't have any trim for the front door yet. But overall, that, uh, that's a big sigh of relief. I was really worried it was going to look like crap. But I'm actually, I'm, I'm super stoked with how it turned out. Let this set up for a couple days and I can come back to it down the road and scuff it up or put a little paint on there. If you guys have any advice, leave a comment. Door time. Well, man, it's going to come over a little later, so we got the paint out. Uh, probably going to just uh, fire this thing up, back it out, pull it over so it's a little more centered in the garage. All I'm planning on doing is I'm going to mask the door or the fender, the quarter, put some paper back, do something on the roof. I'm going to mask this little section here. I'm going to try and blend it in right uh, right in the center because that's where it looks like it was on the on the back. Pull the trim off. I'm not pulling handles. I'm not going to pull the door locks. just going to mask around it because really who cares. Scuff it. Fire a couple coats of uh, blue on it. It'll be shiny. Let that dry. And I don't know if we'll do it later today or tomorrow. Probably just today. I got some hardener for it or activator. So I should be able to kind of scuff it up a little bit. I'm going to leave all that. And we'll see. So it uh, should go good. Prepare yourselves for myrrh. You're going to need it. All right. Car's all masked off. As good as it's going to be. Both sides are done. We gave it a quick scuff. Cleaned it up. So it's ready to go. Marvelous myrrh here is going to lay down some paint. 
perfectly the first time, like usual. The best I can afford. Looks really good. Perfectionist Murr really went hard at it. <clears throat> Little as you know, I'm gonna sand it and scuff it and beat it up. I'm sure we'll be able to handle it, but uh, let this set up for a little bit. We'll peel all the masking off, leave the doors for a couple of days, let the paint harden up. Tomorrow we'll be back out. We'll be working on inner structures, maybe fitting in some glass. And in a couple days, we'll see what we can do to make these doors uh, match the rest of the car, because they're too pretty. So I figured I'd show you what I've done, and then uh, we'll start again because i got to do both sides uh, for the trim, and you'll see how I did it. So, that's what the car looks like. Now it's kind of looked like this a bunch, uh, but the trim is now permanently fixed, so it's not just kind of you know glued on there or whatever. Uh, I made a bunch of little tabs to uh, screw this all on, so it's not going to fly off or anything. Uh, everything is mounted properly. The only thing I glued on just with some uh, Too Faced tape, I went and bought some new stuff today, uh, is this. Because again, the plan isn't to leave this on, I just I couldn't handle the uh, the door break and I realize it doesn't match and I don't know what I'm going to do at the top yet. I'm hoping I'll find some trim for the door. Uh, but yeah, it worked out pretty good. I made a couple tabs, so everything's screwed in, everything is tight. These are all mounted from the inside, because uh, that's how they would have been, they actually screwed in from the door. So you won't ever notice that, so that's good. Uh, I filled in the ends with some body filler, just kind of painted a little bit of silver paint. Might need a little bit more, but eh, it's far from perfect, but does okay. And again, once I get the other trim on, it'll line up so you'll never notice it. Uh, the belt line trim, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the back worked out pretty good. Obviously, you know, it's two pieces, so it is what it is. At the front, I managed to make it line up uh, front and back, but there are a few holes you're going to see, but... Uh, Hey, I'm not trying to hide it. It was a four-door for print load. I can deal with a couple of holes. So I'll get started on the other side and kind of just show you what I was doing. And we'll go from there. Uh, I wanted to make sure on the doors everything had come off because if I do find the proper trim, I'd like to put it on properly. So let's get started on the other side. All right, so here's where I'm at. I put a uh, schmuck of filler on. You guys like the Canadian words. Uh, just on the edge there taped it so I'll just kind of obviously I'm going to grind most of that out but I did all three of those on the door molding I just made a couple little tabs I just kind of cut out some sheet metal I had and I welded on a, a quarter inch bolt I just cut the head off of it uh, I'm sure there's clips and all that to buy but it's, uh, it's like Friday at 8 o'clock so that's not going to work so my plan front and back and I'm just going to put some uh, double face tape kind of in the center of it to kind of hold it Hopefully this will work out. I already test fit it, so I'll look cool on camera. It basically holds it. I had to drill a new hole. Stay in the front, so obviously I raised it up a little bit, and that's why you're going to see this. But uh, eh, looks fine, right? Uh, the mold. The main reason I wanted to uh, put a nut and bolt in it is the molding's got a bit of a, a wow in it. So I'll be able to bolt it front and back. Couple in the center, be no big deal. Same thing back here, I'll just weld on a bunch of studs. It should work, the only problem I have is these back two. They originally went through, because that's actually the back of the door. Well now that the door's all welded on, I can't get to that. So I gotta move them ahead, uh, probably three or four inches. 
so it kind of flares out a little bit. So that's where I'll just double face tape the back. It'll be good enough. The front's real simple. Uh, once it goes on, I just kind of put some tech screws in that way because that's actually how the molding was held on. And same with the top. I think I'll just put a little bit of double face tape just to hold it. So pretty simple. I'll get this molding on. And then this one I literally just clamped on with double face tape. So easy peasy. I'll get this all mounted properly once I get those sanded down and painted. And I'll kind of show you how it all worked out on this side. So everything's just kind of set on the car. Uh, oh, I left it there, but the bottom, uh, like the belt line or whatever you want to call it, is, is lined up pretty good. Uh, I put this on. This is just the uh, tape. So I put a couple clamps just to hold it. These are just sitting on there. You can see the edge. I cleaned them up. So they just got filler in there. So I just got to do a little bit of painting on that. This one actually has to be trimmed a little. Down here, this one I've secured on. I got the little Bel Air thing in. This is still just loose because this is where it gets tricky. You want to line it up here. But I also got to push down on that to make it match the door. And this one I got to make a few little tabs for yet. But otherwise, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Having the molding on sure makes a big difference. Takes away a lot from the, the rest of the car and stuff. I think I might have taken a little bit too much off this side, but again, this side of the car was rougher, so I don't really like the way it looks, but it does suit the rest of the car. But uh, I'll get this finished off. <clears throat> Just needs a couple little uh, tabs welded on the one uh, one piece of trim. That'll probably start ripping shit out of the inside because uh, it's just been, uh, I'm going to say storage. And I can start working on that. I got to work on the inner panels, put the seats back in. Uh, these bucket seats I have, I got to make them fit. Probably have to build a bracket or do something. Hopefully they'll fit nicely though. The problem with these tri-fives is the... The floor is curved down each side uh, for the bench seat. So putting buckets in is a bit of a pain. On the uh, 55, I had to build a little bracket. But nothing that's out of the ordinary. Get everything cleaned up and keep going. Uh, I don't quite know where I left it off, but uh, the trim's done. It's all mounted. I think I covered that, but it's all 100% done. Uh, I cleaned out the inside of the car uh, somewhat, and then I started welding on that uh, little structure. So basically I just uh, trimmed down the inner part of the door that I originally cut off and stitched it back together. So I just welded it to the back where it kind of closed and then I stitched it right down to the post. So it really stiffened everything up quite a bit. And then the bottom of the door, I just welded it right to the floor. So it's pretty good in there. Should be a little bit of trimming I have to do to make the glass fit, uh, or the plexiglass I should say, but not too bad. I have the garnish molding ready to go. So tomorrow after work, it's Saturday, so I do half day Saturday. I'm hoping I can uh, get some plexiglass maybe on the way home. And set that in there, because I'd like to get the glass in on both sides. And then my garnish moldings, which are right there. I can get those in. Uh, the ones already on, the driver's side is off. And then when the doors got taken off, the guy kind of screwed the door panels in the front a little bit. Eh, I know they're pretty ratty, but I'm hoping I just kind of glue them back maybe. I ordered the back panels, I don't know if I said it already, uh, for a two-door, so they just kind of slide in and they have a couple little mounts, but they get sandwiched uh, in the back there. I did it on the 55, they were cheap and easy. So I should be able to do that, then put the seat back in. Uh, unfortunately, I guess they're going to be closed this weekend. For uh, Thanksgiving, I'll, I'll be behind a little bit. But I can get it all together other than those panels, the glass can be in, garnish moldings, all that, and then seats. I'm actually really flying through this faster than I thought because it's only Friday night <clears throat> and Danielle works tomorrow evening so I have uh, another night to myself. So I'm really going to bang this out pretty quick. So I got the seat I think where I want it. I cut a few spacers and Danny's just going to come out and she's going to sit in the car and make sure it's far enough ahead. I've never put in a seat for a short person. Usually I just do it for myself. So I think it'll be okay. <clears throat> I got it lined up with the factory holes. Well, I guess we just gotta make sure these tracks are the same on these buckets as it is on a on a bench seat.
All right, guys, the car's outside. The garage is a mess, so now I get to clean that up a little bit. But now, I'm just gonna see how it turned out. The paint still needs some work. I mean, it needs a little bit of polishing and love and all that, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Seats are in, looks good inside there. I ordered the uh, sill plates, so I'm gonna get a set of those, two door proper ones. Gotta do a little mess around with the, the hinges just to adjust them. Uh, obviously the garnish bowlings are just kind of sitting there. I got to put all those in. Uh, what else did I order there? I think that's about it. So yeah, it turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it. You can just kind of barely see where the where it was. I mean, wear that in a little bit. Hey, I can always go back and, and fill it a little bit more or do whatever. But uh, I'm pretty stoked on it. Needs to be lower. I want to lower it a couple inches. Make it look a lot cooler, but... It's something anybody can do. I bought a set of doors for 300 bucks, I think is what I paid for it. And then what else did I do to it? The doors were only real expense. You know, a couple hundred dollars in filler, grinding materials, welding equipment, stuff like that. Garnish blanks came with it. Uh, 50 bucks for plexiglass, put the back glass in. That's all I kind of did. The seats I had, I mean, they were a couple hundred bucks, but still, if you want to do that, you could have just run the old bench if you wanted to. And I think it had a carpet kit in it, and that was it. So pretty simple. Lots of grinding once you get in there, but uh, it is what it is. Next step is this thing. I ordered a bunch of LS parts. They should be on their way. I'm hoping next week I'll have those. Uh, brake kit, I'll do that. And then I think I'm just going to cut the front springs and put blocks in the back to lower it a couple inches. And that's it. So there you go. Car's done in whatever it was, four or five parts. You got yourself a two-door 57 Chevy, 55, 67, whatever you have. So that's it for me. Like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, all those good things. I think we might do a live stream a little later on. So if you're watching this today, I'll see you guys in a couple hours.